So, Pete, can you tell us about the anatomy of yoga? Yes. <laughs> well, you, you picked me up on the thing that um, I feel most irritated about at the moment. I, I feel uh, slightly guilty, too, because I was one of the pioneers in England of the anatomy of yoga, and I certainly built my reputation on it in the early days. But I've come to realise that it's a, it can become a terrible red herring. It can lead us very much up the garden path. In the sense that we become, and there are many books now describing anatomy, you know, which muscles do what, which muscles lift your arm, turn your leg out, are involved in trichinasana or forward bends or shoulder stands. And I've been a part of that. But when you think about it, that's not how human beings move. Human beings move as neurological orchestrations of muscular patterns. And it's it's the anatomy of the dead body that people are describing when they're describing dissected anatomy. You know, the, um, the groin is being restricted by tightness in the adductors or I can't lift my arm because my latissimus dorsi is too tight. This is the anatomy of, of the death, really. This is looking at dead bodies and trying to understand how to move from dissection. If you want to understand how to move, you have to look at living people and see how they move to inform you. You can look at evolution, uh, that helps to see how people have evolved to move. You can look at childhood development and see how children organise their bodies in order to stand and walk and run and do the things they do. But you can't look at a dead body and dissect it and look at anatomy and try and reverse engineer that and say, well, this bit joins to this bit, therefore it does this. Uh, it's a mistake. Uh, and I think uh, yoga currently is going a long way down that path. And it doesn't help. Mm.